What's up guys, Mike the Cop, and in this video you're gonna see an officer uh, apprehending someone I believe suspected of shoplifting. All I know about this, is the, the original post on Facebook says this is a Kroger on 10th Street. What 10th Street, what Kroger, I don't know. But watch the video, take it in for yourself. If you're interested in my takeaways uh, on it, just stick around after that, after the cell phone footage, and I'll give you my uh, top three takeaways on this video. Check it out. Pick him up, pick him up. Oh my God, what happened? I'm not going to tell you this. Oh, he was still on Damn. Oh, hey, he was still on Damn. Hey, stop resisting. Okay. Stop resisting. There, there you go. We need it. I don't care what color. Yeah. I drive a truck and I put it with that shit every time. Right. 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 I just got this. I got this stuff right here. You're going to get it. You're going to get it again. Place your hands behind your back. Place your hands. Go look. Behind your back. Put your hands behind your back. Okay. Now, God damn it. Place your hands behind the back. Don't go on that one. Okay, okay. You're going to get it again. For what? I've ordered you numerous times. For what? Ah, Place your hands behind the back. Place your hands behind the back. Place your hands behind the back. Why are you making it worse for yourself, man? Just put your hand behind your back. Do not spray me. Ah, you motherfucker! God damn you! Ow! Ah. Don't dance, fuck, huh? Motherfucker, place your hand behind your back! Stop this fuck! Put your hand on it. Put your foot on it. Put your foot on his hand. 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 Yeah, push it. Put your foot on his hand. Put your foot on his hand. Keep it done. Okay. All right, guys, my three key takeaways for this. And I, let me say this first. Kudos to the officer for stepping up and engaging. He didn't walk away. He didn't ignore it. He didn't, uh, you know, make excuses for waiting for someone else or anything else like that. He engaged the person that he needed to engage, deal with the situation, and he stepped up. So kudos. Not, you know, that's a minority of the population. So thank you. And kudos to the people who wanted to step in and help the cop. Uh, that's more common than people think. And so it's just cool to see that, that that was happening in that situation. But there are some key takeaways, and I don't want this to be Monday morning quarterback here, and it, it's, not, it's not meant to be super critical, just objective, real world, from my experience, observations. 
that I hope are helpful to you and, and, and encouraging to you as cops and explanatory to people who are not. Number one, he did a great job controlling the body at first. He got a takedown. There's some other ways to handle that, but he was in a dominant position. It's called the mount, and he had it. He had it. He was there. It was over. He just didn't realize, it, I don't think. Had the mount. You can do one of two things in that situation. You can wait until the energy is depleted from the, the suspect that is uh, underneath you, or you can at least buy more time to call for backup. Wait to transition because you've got all the time in the world in that dominant position. Maintain that. That becomes priority number one is safely positioning yourself in that position of domination and, and waiting that out until you're ready to transition to the next thing. That's number one. Number two is don't overly depend on your secondary weapons like tasers. They are not 100% effective. And when our mindset is that we are dependent upon those things, we miss the primary tools that we have of both our mind and our body to be able to deal with a suspect. So tasers are great tools uh, in, in the right circumstances love them uh, as a tool for law enforcement. would never want to see those go away, but we can't train to be dependent upon them. We can't train as though they are the solution to the problems we have. Not, not a safe way to go about use of force. So that's my second takeaway. Don't, don't just keep trying the taser when it is proven to be ineffective, especially. Lastly is just an encouragement to train just to refine ourselves that much more. Look at the situation, what do you learn? As a cop, you looking at that, what would you do? How could you do that better? Um, as a non-cop, you understand it's not always that easy to take, it, taser's not working, uh, verbal commands aren't working. That's why use of force is never pretty. So just understand that training is important. You can't defund the police and expect them to do a better job at this. And if you are officers, please, even if it's just on your own, your department sucks and doesn't provide the training for you, Train, train, train. You deserve it. Your family deserve it. Uh, deserves it. Your community deserves it. Uh, so if you're taking the responsibility of this job, take the responsibility, even if it's on your own, to to take steps to train for those situations to be that much better the next time it happens. Again, I'm not trying to be super critical. I, I'm sure I've had plenty of uses of force where I did the wrong things. I'm just saying uh, these are the observations from an objective standpoint as I can see it after the fact, and hopefully it's something that can help you future in the fact. So those are my takeaways and, and, and just imagine a world in which uh, cops don't have those opportunities to train and are, are given only options of secondary weapons and are second guessing themselves constantly on camera about use of force. It makes it dangerous for them. It makes it dangerous for the person being arrested. It makes it dangerous for bystanders. So something to consider as well. All right. Thanks for watching guys.